welcome to Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. I'm Tom Merritt, your dummy for episode four about A New Hope. Those there are the sounds of the Andrew Allen Trio doing the Cantina Band theme. And you can find that album live from the Cantina, as well as many others from the Andrew Allen Trio at andrewallentrio.com. If you are... Just jumping in, maybe you thought, well, I'll just I'll just see what he says about a new hope. I'll just jump in here. The idea is that I, while I went to the theaters to see Star Wars in 1977 as a seven-year-old boy and have watched way too much Star Wars, read way too much Star Wars, played with too many Star Wars toys, I wanted to try to approach these movies as if I had never seen them before. If I was entirely dumb about Star Wars. How would I approach these movies? Of course, one of the things if I'm dumb about Star Wars is I I look at the title, I see episode one, and I think, well, that obviously must be the first one I should watch. Uh, so we started with episode one, The Phantom Menace, knowing nothing about anything in this universe. Uh, and now we have watched episode one, episode two, episode three, and this is my notes on episode four, A New Hope. Uh, as a new viewer, but someone who's seen episodes one through three, I feel like this is a much simpler approach. We don't have as many storylines going on. We don't have an A and a B story all the time. Uh, but we still have uh, some old friends. Not not a ton, because remember, at the end of episode three, the whole world has gone up in flames. A lot of people died. Uh, you're not going to see Padme anymore, right? Uh, but I was expecting to see the kids, and I was not disappointed. Uh, this is a movie where we get thrown into seeing Anakin's kids right away. Now we get the same open. Uh, I think it might have been a different studio intro, but whatever. Uh, same open. Uh, we get the little text explaining what's going on. Now, the first thing that confused me was they said it was a time of civil war. I thought we just finished a civil war. Wasn't the Separatist versus the Republic... Essentially, I mean, I guess the civil war it was a civil war. Was it a civil war? We got another civil war. Uh, but OK, these are rebels. Uh, and I guess Palpatine declared himself emperor. So these are rebels against the emperor. It's just war, war, war in this universe. Hence the name. I mean, it's not star peace, is it? Then we go right into like we haven't even seen any people yet. And they're like Princess Leia. And I'm like, well, I, remember, I made note of those names at the end of episode three. Leia Skywalker. That's that's who we've got here. Uh, that's I, I'm I'm counting on that. Uh, so this is must this is the overthrow Palpatine story. That's what I'm expecting. This is the rebels fighting to to unseat the emperor. And then we start off with some cool planets, see a couple in the distance, and then we've got a red one down below. And whoa, did those Republic ships get big? Still kind of the main engine f- configuration in the back, but. Oh, that is a big, big ship. They uh, Empire does things big, is what I'm uh, what I'm guessing. Uh, the uh, gold robot uh, has a friend. Uh, we never see him again, uh, but he's got a little silver robot, uh, and of course R two. Uh, and we know these two from previous. Uh, Anakin created this one. Uh, and we remember his memory got wiped, so we're, we're assuming he doesn't know anything. Still don't know whether this guy's memory got wiped, but um, and I, and and I think. He really hung around, even though he was created by Anakin, he hung around with Padme a lot, and R2 mostly hung around with Anakin. Uh, but now it looks like they're both Leia's. Uh, and then bursting in are a bunch of clone troopers, and they look different. Uh, no colors on them now, different design. So, okay, I'm getting, the, I'm getting the ship is different, the clone troopers are different, this is, this is a future. You know, we've, we've gone a few years forward. Things have progressed, designs have changed. Uh, Leia Skywalker is a rebel... Uh, and the Republic is after her. So, so they're, they're going after her. And then this is what I love about this episode is like, boom, 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 right through the minute we get Anakin, no hanging around waiting for a reveal. Here comes Anakin Vader stomping through the door. Does he know that Leia is his daughter? I mean, he probably, he probably doesn't know that they, they were trying to hide the kids. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing she doesn't go by Leia Skywalker. That would be kind of a giveaway. Um, and then we see her. Well, I, we assume it's her, and we find out later it is. Uh, you know, a, a important-looking woman with R2, so that must be Leia. Why she ran off was not immediately clear, uh, but we do see Anakin uh, up against some guys fighting him. It's not really this guy. Uh, and uh, we can tell very quickly that he is not reformed. 
He's not just in his robot suit and like, oh, I've decided to be good again. No, he's extra evil. Just straight off chokes a guy with his hands. Like doesn't use any magic stuff. Just <laughs> chokes him off. Uh, and Leia gets captured. So she's going to meet daddy. Uh, now, down on the planet, uh, these robots. Now, remember in episode two, they hung out when 3PO... 3PO? Uh, was first brought back uh, from from An- Anakin's planet. Uh, they hung out a little bit, and he got all chopped up. We don't really see them hanging out more. Uh, apparently, they've become buddies now. And R2 has the plans. So we're already set up with the main plot device, right? The, the Empire wants the plans. Leia hid the plans for the Rebellion. Uh, and then they go off in an escape pod. Now, there's kind of an unnecessary scene where we see the guys on the ship go, oh, hold on, don't shoot that after all. There's no life forms in it. Why wouldn't you just shoot it anyway? Just shoot all the escape pods on principle, but okay, whatever. Uh, Then we get to meet Leia for real, and uh, she really does kind of look like Padme. I have to say, she's even got the weird hairstyles. Uh, So... Uh, Anakin meets meets his daughter. They pretend not to know each other. I'm assuming he doesn't know her, but maybe she knows him, but maybe not. Maybe she doesn't. Maybe no one ever told her that that's that's her dad. Uh, he also calls her senator, so she's like her mom, except she's a princess and a senator. But then her mom gets to be queen and a senator. What the hell? Uh, but but she's also a secret rebel. So she's a senator in the Republic or the Empire, the, the Republic Empire, uh, and yet she's also secretly a rebel. The series is always confusing on the sides. I mean, uh, uh, also, uh, didn't take too long for them to figure out that the plans were down in the escape pod. I don't think they know quite at that point that it's the droids. Uh, here we get the uh, the two robots walking around on the planet, and I have to say the effects just aren't as cool. Uh, it's just a desert. It's it's not it's not very alien, uh, and then of course we have the robots start to quibble each other. Maybe they're not buddies after all, uh, and and this is a much slower paced story. This thing takes forever to get going. Uh, the other three episodes were very fast paced, sometimes confusing, but they were always moving. This story, wow! Once we get down on that planet, we're just going to stay on that planet for a while. Uh, first, it looks like R two should have stayed with Golden Robot, uh, because these little guys <laughs> come along, and uh, they they now actually have the the secret plans. They may, the, the little guys may not know it, but they do. Um, and then we get this really cool scene. So, okay, maybe the planet isn't as cool, but the interior scene is really cool. We get this robot junkyard uh, full of all of these broken down robots and stuff. I thought that was amazing. And then next thing you know, aha! Goldie was there after all. Who knew? So these two are back together again. Uh, it was just a little Laurel and Hardy bit. Okay, uh, so then we get uh, more clones down on on the planet uh, trying to find the robots. Uh, won't find them now, though, because the little guy's got them. Uh, I noticed, though, that the clone troopers don't have accents. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um, then, next thing you know... Uh, they they've got this tense scene where the doors opening up and the and the little guys are are forcing our robot friends out the door and you're thinking oh the the clone troopers got to him uh, instead we see what looks like the place where Anakin's mom had gone and Anakin's aunt and uncle quote unquote uh, were living and that's where they left Luke. Uh, this is where his mom lived before she died, and there, and then right off, Luke, it's Luke. I I love that we don't beat around the bush and wait to give some cagey reveal. It's like here's Leia, here's Anakin, here's Luke. Let's get right into this story. Uh, there is a weirdness though because I'm I'm a hundred percent certain that Golden Robot was living <laughs> with the aunt and uncle even when they were young before Anakin found him and took him back after his mom died uh but the uncle pretends like he doesn't recognize him uh and then you know i would be like hey luke look this is the robot your 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 dead your dad uh that we've never talked about uh built so i i guess you i guess you do pretend like you don't know him uh then we get the uh 
the little bit where uh, we see a tiny bit of Leia, and she's asking for Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Does it mean we're going to get to see Obi-Wan Kenobi in this thing? Uh, what's he going to look like? What's that going to be like? Uh, oh, by the way, Luke, that's your sister that you're calling beautiful. She's beautiful. He doesn't know, though. He doesn't know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we are destined to unite the siblings in this. And R2 <laughs> tricks Luke, Luke's not very bright sometimes, into uh, taking off his restraining thing so that he can escape. Uh it's interesting that we're really only on one storyline now. There's no B story. It's just Luke, Luke, Luke this whole time. Uh, so then they start talking about Kenobi, which would make sense that he might be hiding nearby to keep an eye on Luke because he is the one who brought Luke to his uncle. And his uncle calls him a crazy old man. But then they told Luke, at this point we find out, they told Luke Anakin is dead. So I guess they kind of have to pretend like, you know, uh, you know, Kano- oh, Kano- Obi Wan Kenobi. Well, he's probably dead too. It's, it's kind of, eh, kind of awkward. But then these are not professional secret keepers, so maybe that makes sense. Um, maybe Kenobi is pretending to be dead. Uh, I don't know. Um, and 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 they're hiding him from Anakin. Uh, and then you get that lovely bit uh, where the aunt says. He's too much like his father. And the uncle's like, that's what I'm afraid of. And you're like, yeah, I know why. Because, um, <laughs> uh-huh. <sighs> yeah, he's he's evil. He's, he, by the way, your dad's evil. Uh, yeah, and then he ha- he worries about the sand people. He's like, oh, we can't go out, out after R2 escape because of the sand people. Yeah, sand people killed your, your grandma, Luke. Good idea. Stay away from them. Uh, but he goes out anyway. And then he gets beat up by sand people like grandmother, like grandson. Uh, sand people are easily scared, apparently, though, by someone going, woo! I was not a very scary yell, but it scared them off. And then there he is, old man Kenobi! And again, uh, bearing out that many years have passed thing, uh, they actually get an older actor to play him, but he's very, very close to the to the original Kenobi. Uh, he sounds like him. He sort of looks like him. And... Uh, Again, not cagey about this. He's like, do you know Obi-Wan Kenobi? He's like, well, yeah, it's it's me. Uh, and by the way, o- Obi-Wan definitely knows R2 as well, but everyone's playing it cool here. And I guess that all makes sense because you've got the second most evil man in the universe uh, who doesn't know that Luke is his son, so they're trying to protect him. Um, I think, I mean, he would know 3PO the golden bot too, uh, who gets cut apart a lot. Remember, he got cut, he got he got his head chopped off in episode two. He gets his arm chopped off here. It's not going to be a running thing, I guess. Um, and then we get this amazing scene where Kenobi is talking to Anakin's son about Anakin and and uses Anakin's name and everything. Says he was a good friend, even though those two fought all the time. But okay, you know we remember people more fondly later on. Lots of lies about Anakin, though. There is definitely a cover story going on. In fact, uh, he so much doesn't want Luke to know what really happened to Anakin that he's like, he he basically tells them that there are two people and that Anakin was killed by Darth Vader. Uh, So it's it's just a a lie cover story to keep Luke from the truth. Um, And then you get this cool scene where Kenobi gives Luke Anakin's lightsaber. Uh, this is your father's lightsaber. Your uncle didn't want you to have it, but I'm just going to give it to you anyway. Uh, then we get the real message to Kenobi from Leia, uh, who says, you served my father in the Clone Wars. Well, first of all, I, I barely remember. Apparently, we did meet uh, Leia's father, meaning the, the 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 senator that she was dropped off with on Alderaan. Uh Apparently, we saw him before, but really, we only really get to meet him at the very end of episode three, uh, which is still during the Clone Wars, I suppose. But uh, yeah, my f- it should be more like, my father saved your ass at the end of the Clone Wars, but whatever. Uh, Kenobi uh, very apparently wants to reunite the siblings because he's like, hey, Luke, you should come with me. There's really no reason to bring Luke otherwise, right? Like, hey, I'm going to go meet your sister. Want to meet your sister? Which if they're being so protective about keeping Luke away from the truth. It seems risky to want him to meet his sister, um, but you can tell Kenobi really wants to train him the way he trained Anakin for a while after Qui-Gon uh, uh, died. You know, he, especially in episode two, he he was he was the master for Anakin. So you can, he kind of wants a do-over. 
He wants he wants to do it right this time with Luke, or at least he'd like to try. Okay, finally, we're off that story and back to Vader on the big planet station. And uh, uh, <sighs> the Republic replaced all the way, we find out. Uh, the Senate dissolved. The last va- and They even say last, last of the Republic is gone now. Uh, so yeah, uh, Anakin gets a little preachy. Uh, now that he's Vader, he was always a little bit self-righteous, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, still creepy, still angry, even a little petulant there when he, he gets all pissy about the Force and chokes a guy. Um, all right, that's a short scene. Uh, but then we find out that the clone troopers are called Storm Troopers now. Uh, and they came and freaking killed the aunt and uncle. Just burned them, burned them alive. Like that is that is some evil, vicious stuff. These clone troopers were really nice at episode two, or storm troopers. Now, uh, then we're back to that planet ship, the Death Planet thing, and we get the awesome scene where <laughs> Anakin is about to torture his daughter. Uh, pace picking up now. Okay, now we go to Moss Eisley, which looks like I can't remember the names. It looks like it might be Anakin's hometown. It looks very very similar to episode one. Uh, and then Kenobi does the hand waving thing, which half the time has never worked, but apparently it works really well on the new storm clones, uh, people. And, uh, then we get this great alien bar scene. We got all these little aliens, uh, hanging around. We got some awesome jazz music. Uh, they do not like robots in that bar, but, but the bar is kind of like that robot junkyard. We get lots of cool things that show this is like a, 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 a lot, a lot of different life forms gathering in one place. And then, uh, you've got Kenobi talking to one of the Tarzan guys that Yoda used to hang out with in episode three. Uh, so maybe we're going to see Yoda uh, next is what I'm thinking. Uh, and then we get this weird guy picking on Luke for no reason. Um, and, 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 and Luke Luke doesn't really, I mean, Anakin would have just like punched the guy in the face or chopped his arm off or something, Uh, but that's what Kenobi does. Kenobi chops the guy's arm off. So very different from that bar scene we had in episode three, or wait, was that episode two where uh, Anakin and Kenobi go through the bar? Uh, But again, Kenobi in a bar, he's, he's not gonna, he's not gonna hold back. He's gonna use this saber. Uh, Okay. So then we have a meeting with Luke Kenobi, uh, the Tarzan guy, and a mercenary, uh, the, merc- the mercenary guy, who is going to, to fly them. Uh, and they do a, little, uh, do a little negotiation. And here Luke's being annoying. Luke is being like, I, I could fly. What? That's a lot of money. I mean, Luke doesn't know anything. He's been living on a farm. Uh, just hire, let, let Kenobi hire the mercenary guy. Kenobi's good with this kind of stuff. We've seen that before. All right, then we find out that mercenary guy owes somebody some money. Uh, and a green guy comes up, and he's dangerous. Um, well, when I say he, I mean the merc guy. The merc is dangerous because the green guy doesn't even notice that he's pulling a gun on him, and then he shoots him. Uh, merc shot the green guy. As far as I can tell, that's what happened. And uh, we're out the door. It strikes me right at this point that we have not seen the Emperor yet. Uh, and I'm wondering, like, when are we going to get to Palpatine? But whatever. Okay. Uh, the planet ship is going to Alderaan now. Uh, then we notice that Kenobi and Luke are being followed by a guy with a really long nose uh, who talks weird. Uh, it is odd that the, the, the robots or the droids go and hide in a closet. And then when Kenobi and Luke sell... Luke's land speeder. Uh, we they don't even bother looking for the droids. They're just like, well, let's sell the land speeder, get some money. And the next thing we know, the droids show up. So that was that was a little weird. Um, and then Merc meets with the slug guy, who I don't know if he's exactly the same one, but he looks like the slug guy from the race in episode one. Uh, and then there's a guy who looks like Rocket Guy, although we know Rocket Guy is dead. He died in episode two. But there's a another guy who looks like Rocket Guy in this. Uh, standing around, a bunch of slug guys. There's another green guy there. He looks like the other green guy, but I guess the I don't mean to be greenest, uh, but it must be different because he just shot the other green guy. Um, what I don't understand is why Merc 
would step on the slug's tail. All right, so they found the droids. They go and they see the ship. And we realized that that's what, that's what the Merc was standing in front of when he was talking to the slug guy. I don't know where the Merc went, uh, but Tarzan guy is there. And that ship is a piece of junk. Uh, Luke, your mom's shit was way better than what this guy's got. Uh, then, yeah, nose guy turns him in. Uh, so they have to blast their way out. And finally, they're back in space. And the crappy ship can't even jump to light speed. Uh, as far as I know, pretty much every ship, episodes one through three, that wanted to jump into hyperspace jumped into hyperspace. But, oh, not Merc guy's fancy ship. Merc and Tarzan guy's ship has a really slow computer. They need a, a new computer. Then we go back to Tarkin, I believe his name is, and Leia. And she seems to be making fun of his accent because she talks in a British accent there. Uh, but it's not funny for long because, wow, they they freaking destroy Alderaan. They get Leia to talk, and then they blow up her planet anyway. These folks do not mess around. You may have fired. Go ahead, do it. Uh, wow. So then we find out that the Tarzan guy is a Wookiee when they're... Uh, playing uh, some kind of chess-looking game with R2. Uh, and you see Kenobi living the dream, training Luke, trying to help him out. I don't know if that's such a good idea, Kenobi, I'll be honest. You didn't do such a great job picking up for Qui-Gon. But you get to start Luke from the beginning, but he's older. He's a lot older than Anakin was. Anyway, very cool, very interesting. Uh, they don't know Alderaan is gone. They, they think they're about to show up there. Then they find out that even though Leia talked, the place she told them to look at was not a real base, so she punked them. Alderaan's an asteroid field. Uh, Merc guy's ship just gets pounded as they're flying through there. And then they say, oh, we should go for that small moon. And immediately, I mean, I know it's the big space station ship, but I'm like, why would there be a moon? I guess they, I guess they, maybe they destroy the planet, but not the moon that orbits it. But shouldn't they know there would be a moon there if they have proper charts? Anyway, they fly towards the moon, and then you get uh, the great line, that's no moon. <laughs> uh, I think even Kenobi says that. And man, that space station is huge as, you know, Merck's ship's pretty big, and it looks tiny, tiny, tiny flying up to that thing. Uh, so now the plans, which are on R2, are right under Anakin's nose. Uh, and Anakin's nose can sense that Kenobi is there. He's like, I, I said something. What is that? That feels familiar. I feel like maybe that, that is the thing that pushed me into lava once. Maybe. Uh, but they do a nice hiding job on the ship. Uh and then they sneak out before the... Well, they sneak out because of the huge scanner. Apparently, miniaturization took a, a setback during the rise of the Empire. Uh, but they do dress themselves up as clone storms and uh, sneak out. Uh, R2 is back <laughs> to what he's best at, which is controlling elevators. No, there's, he doesn't control any elevators. But uh, he is like, oh, plug in the computers, talk to the computers. Uh, and then Kenobi's like, I'll go shut off the tractor beam now that you've told me where it is. Why would you send the oldest person in your group to shut off the tractor beam? I mean, I guess, okay, uh, Kenobi doesn't want Luke to go because it's dangerous and he's young. Merc is just like, oh, fine, old man, you want to go do it, that's great. Mm, less work for me. Uh, then, then it strikes me as they're talking about the princesses here, the princesses here. I'm like, oh, right, she's Princess Leia. Strikes me again. How did she become princess? Uh, but then they come up with a cool plan where they dress up like storm clones and then they they take the Wookiee as a fake prisoner. And we get this great tease scene. I know I've been praising the fact that they just jump into things, but this was a good tease thing where like Anakin and Kenobi just barely miss each other in the halls. Uh, then they do the deception with the Wookiee. They shoot up the place. Uh, the Merc actually has a little comic scene where he's kind of awkward talking to the guy trying to convince him everything's all right, and then he shoots the transmitter. That's funny. Uh, and then we get the big moment uh, where Luke and Leia meet for the first time. Anakin's kids don't even know it. They don't even know it. And they're like, she's kind of all provocative there. And then I think she senses something because she immediately straightens up once he takes his stormtrooper helmet off. And she's like, oh, uh, he's like, I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm going to rescue you. Uh, Leia is feisty like her dad. Uh, looks like the Merc kind of likes Leia. 
and Luke's feeling protective. He may be instinctually a little brotherly there. He doesn't like the idea of the Merc uh, getting into, you know, saying, I, I either hate, I either want to kill her or, I, or I'm li- beginning to like her. And you could see that brotherly, like, you know, hands off my sister, man. Uh, the garbage scene, by the way, is brilliant. Yeah, it's got tension, it's got danger, but it really doesn't have an enemy except for the tentacle down in the water. Uh, showing that like, hey, you know what? We've had all of these enemies and we could easily just have stormtroopers ta- tra- chase you some more. But uh, I really did think Luke was gone. They play that out. We're like, he's, he's, you even see Leia just start to slump like she's given up. Uh, best scene in all four episodes so far if you ask me. Uh, Great bit with the yelling at the end where uh, 3PO thinks that uh, he's killed them, but they're just celebrating. Uh, Having having it be the tentacle, and then the tentacle goes away, and you think they're safe, and then the walls move, uh, and and then 3PO has the comlink turned off, which, by the way, in episode three, R2 should have just turned off his comlink, don't you think? Uh, Because 3PO had the sense, which... 3PO honestly doesn't normally have the sense to do stuff like that. Uh, But then, of course, R2 shuts down the elevators. I mean, the moving walls. That's his thing. All right. Back to Kenobi. uh, Traipsing around. And honestly, nobody sees a guy in super old-fashioned Clone Wars era Jedi clothes walking around. That's the power of his his Jedi Force thing. Uh, And he always liked solo missions. Let me get a little uh, sexist uh, line from the Merc to make us hate him again. We talked about not wanting to take female advice. Shut up. Uh, The clones definitely talk different now. So I'm like, wait a minute, maybe they're different clones now. And they seem to be maybe different sizes. Uh, The Merc is nuts, goes running along shooting. And we get this cool moment with the brother and the sister on the run. Uh, and uh, Leia self-sufficient, like her mom, like Padme. She could pick up a blaster with the best of them. Not a problem. She's not going to shrink away and pretend she can't handle herself. Uh, and then where did Luke learn to swing like that? Well, I guess he swung across canyons back on the farm. Anyway, you get this, lo- this sisterly kiss. I think it's uh, very clear that while she wants to kiss him for luck, She's not gonna kiss him on the lips. I mean, I know she just met him too, but there's more to that. She's like that. That's my brother. I could just tell, even though she doesn't really know it. Uh, and then, wow, yes, Kenobi and Anakin, they meet again, uh, and they're still bickering. I am the master, only a master of evil, Darth. I'm not even gonna call you Anakin. Uh, the saber fight seems a little slower than all of the the, the light sword fights have been up until now. Maybe it's because Kenobi's old, but I wouldn't think that Anakin would give him that kind of uh, uh, advantage. Uh, Kenobi then sees Luke and does this weird thing where he just sort of gives up, and he holds a sword in front of him, and then that's it. He gets killed, but there's nothing left of him. So it's weird. Uh and then you want to go like, hey, Anakin, that guy over there is really mad at you. That's your kid. Uh, then we hear Kenobi's voice, and we're like, oh, crap, he's not dead. He, is he? Well, he's dead, but he's not dead. Is he a spirit? Is he ghost Kenobi? I think he's ghost Kenobi. Um, then we're off, and we're running away the, the, because he did turn off uh, the tractor beam. Uh, so Merc and Wookiee uh, can get the ship out, and they're being chased by these new Republic ships uh, that look different. I guess they're Empire ships now. Uh, and then we have the battle scene, and then 3PO is like, oh, I didn't like this, and he's all in wires. I'm like, oh, you're the comic relief now. Okay, you're the silly one. Uh, they got tracked by Dad, he, who's like, yeah, don't worry. I, I put a tracking device on it. No problem. Smart. Make them feel like they had to fight their way out. But Leia knows it because she's smart like her mom. She's like, that was too easy. They totally tracked us. Uh, then you get another one of these establishing scenes. I like these scenes where you show uh, that Luke instinctually cares about his sister. He's protective of her. He doesn't want the Merc to get his hands on her. And every time he starts to imply that, he's like, you know what? Just back off. Uh, cool planets again, still more Earth-like, but the cool ruins at the Rebel base. Uh, the Rebel ships look a little more like what I'm used to from the Republic, so that makes sense, because Republic was supposedly the good people, even though we now know that they, they weren't all good people. Uh, and the planet ship is coming. It's going gonna, it's gonna to destroy this planet that the Rebels are on. The Rebels are screwed. 
Uh, they talk about how they've looked at the plans and there's this impossible thing. There's It's this long, complicated explanation about a trench and an exhaust port uh, and it's two meters wide and basically nobody nobody could hit this. But Luke's like, oh, it's, it's like hitting these things on my farm because uh, the farm boy can do anything. Seems unlikely to succeed, but uh, there we go. Then you see uh, Merc and Wookiee uh, packing up their the reward for helping to save Leia, uh, which you know makes sense. They've got to go pay off his his bill. He already shot Green Guy, and he's got to pay Slug Guy. So uh, Luke gets preachy, I'm like, "Oh, you are like Anakin, excellent." Uh, but Leia's smart and says, "Look, that's you know he's just got he's got to walk his own path here. He has to follow his own path." Uh, listen to your sister, Luke. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so then there's a very reasonable scene where the commander comes up is like, are you sure you can handle the starfighter? Because we just met you and you're from a small farm. Uh, but then I guess there's somebody else from his same area who's like, oh no, Luke's one of the greatest pilots ever. And the commander's like, great, well then you'll do fine. Uh, I guess they have a very brief vetting process in the rebellion at this stage. Uh, and then they ask him if he wants to replace R2, which that makes sense because R2's old. R2 was in episode one helping fix broken ships like he's been around forever uh then i think we get the thing i said i said that that the the trash garbage scene was my favorite it was my favorite at that point i think we get the greatest battle scene ever uh it's like an old war movie uh we've got all the radio chatter we've got all the call signs luke is red five there's a fat guy who's called porkins which i find maybe tasteless uh but it's it's just stellar. You're just you're just watching this this battle scene and this fog of war feel, and everyone's trying to figure out what's going on in the chaos and execute an impossible plan. And Ghost Kenobi is there still talking to Luke, uh, and then you'd think the planet ship would have more than five of its small ships to send out against them, uh, but that seems to be enough because they're tearing apart the rebel ships anyway. And then for some reason, Anakin <laughs> decides, Anakin Vader decides to take one of the pilots and be like, yeah, come with me. I'm going to go out there and take this on myself. I guess Anakin was always sort of a micromanager that way. He would just jump out of uh, cars and stuff. So, all right. Uh, he has a hard time delegating. Fine. He's out there. And then they go to Tarkin, uh, who I guess is the head of the planet destroyer. And said, uh, "Well, you know, we found this uh, this little problem. Do you do you want to just prepare your ship to get out of here just in case?" And Tarkin's like, "Oh no, absolutely not. You overstate their chances. Oh, you just foreshadowed your own death there, Tarkin." <sighs> and then instead of just having like a quick battle scene where they do this really hard thing and go home, we have two very realistic failures. Uh, the first one, all the ships get blown up uh, by Anakin. Uh, I think, if I remember it right, on their way, and they never get to launch it in. Then you get another, the gold team goes in, and they get the shots off, but they miss the target. They just impact on the surface. Uh, and then the third attack begins, and somehow Luke is now able to issue commands and lead the attack, uh, but there's only one minute. So, you know, all bets are off. Do whatever whatever happens here. Luke's ship is all messed up. Uh and then you have this amazing moment where you know that it's Anakin chasing his son, trying to kill his son, who's trying to blow up the death ship, the death planet ship star. Two tries, two fails. Luke's ship messed up. Anakin chasing his son. 30 seconds. So good. Anakin senses something about Luke. He's starting to figure it out. He didn't ever sense anything about Leia for whatever reason, but maybe it's because of the the battle, the, the adrenaline going. Uh, and then the Kenobi ghost goes all forcey on Luke and tells him to turn off his computer. What? Right, 30 seconds to go, chased by Anakin Vader. Uh, you've got to hit a two-meter target. Turn off your computer, ghost Kenobi. Luke's like, yeah, all right. Uh, then R2 gets hit. Is he finally dead? We have no idea at that point. You're about to destroy the rebel base moon. And then what happens? But the Merc and the Wookiee show up. They shoot Anakin Vader's ship. He's free. Somehow Luke uses Ghost Kenobi's advice to shoot a perfect shot. 
blow up the ship, no time left on the clock. Amazing! That's what makes this episode the best episode yet. Annika survived. We see that real quick. Uh, his ship writes itself. And they're like, oh, okay, all right. So Anakin and Vader are going to be back in episode five. Luke's a hero. Uh, the Merc and the Wookiee uh, helped out. So they're heroes. Uh, there's a little bit of a longish hug between Leia and the Merc. I'm just saying. Uh, they all get awards. So it's a, it's, a, it's a callback to episode one. Remember at the end, they had the peace thing. And there's, there was a big ceremony with, with Leia's mom, Padme, leading it. Uh, I'm wondering if the other pilots got awards. Uh, the other pilots did a lot of work to prepare the way for this. But okay, okay. Uh, you know, Wookiee and Merc had the assist, and, uh, and Luke had the kill shot. So they're the top three. And then we finally get, oh, look, R2 survived. Uh, he's going to make it out. Leia finally has a new hairstyle for the first time all episode. <sighs> and that is episode four. Uh, and frankly, man, I'm excited now. The, this was a hard transition. You, you've you spent three episodes introducing me to a lot of people. Uh, one of the main people you turned into an evil person. You killed almost everyone else. And now uh, you've introduced me to brand new characters, but it was smart to show me those babies at the end of episode three because I was invested in like, okay, these are Anakin's kids. I want to see what happens to them. And you've immediately made me friends with them and willing to see, okay, what's going to happen next? Uh, the Rebellion has won this victory, but obviously Anakin's still out there. We, it was weird that we never saw Palpatine this entire episode. Uh, I, I, I feel like that was a mistake. Like, we we just dropped that storyline, but the Emperor is still in charge, uh, Anakin Vader is still out there, and he is going to be hunting these folks next, and he's, he's starting to figure out. So that's, that's kind of where we're going in episode five, is like, will he figure out who these kids are? Will he be able to turn them over to his side? What's that going to be like? Uh, I, we haven't seen the Emperor. We haven't seen Yoda. Uh, so we have a couple of characters from the first three episodes that took a break here. Uh, and, and really, honestly, that battle scene at the end. Just, just made it. I mean, there have been some great battle scenes, some great space battle scenes, but the choreography of that battle scene in particular, uh, and and it saved this episode. Frankly, it was it was an uneven episode in some places, very slow in places, uh, and 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 it just all came together at the end. So I really enjoyed episode four, and I'm looking forward to episode five of Star Wars, which I hear is called The Empire Strikes Back. So we are going to get some revenge from Anakin Vader, and maybe we'll get to see the Emperor finally. Who knows what else we'll see. We'll find out on the next episode of Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. And don't forget to go pick up that Andrew Allen Trio album live from Cantina, or one of his other albums. He's got a Star Trek album, too, at andrewallentrio.com. See you next time.